All right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I, I'm Jeff Chi. I'm from Vickers Venture Partners. Uh, and uh, my journey into impact investing started a couple of years ago uh, when I was sitting on a panel in Europe. It was actually quite interesting because the, the topic of the panel was impact investing in, in alternate assets. And I was the last panelist to, to start speaking, but consistently everyone on the panel said, oh, we believe in impact and, and impact's very, very important because it's good to do change to society and all that, but we need to focus on commercial returns first. And if we have a little bit of spare capital, we can spend it on good to do things, but, but not necessarily make money. Embedded in that thought is really this concept that if, if, if an investor wants to deliver impact and, and wants to make investments that does good, financial return needs to suffer. And when I spoke, I said, I don't necessarily believe in that hypothesis. And I think back about my own investments, and we've made a lot of investments that have done very, very well. Some of them you see on the stage today. But at the same time have delivered an impact. So I thought I'd take the opportunity today to introduce you to, to a few companies here uh, that has, uh, that has uh, a very purposeful uh, remit and mandate for themselves but also demonstrate that they can generate very huge returns. So let me start by getting uh, the founders on stage to introduce themselves. Um, and I don't know the sequence in which we're gonna flash the slides, but maybe we can have the next slide. <laughs> There's supposed to be a clicker. There we go. Shailesh, you're up. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Yeah, if, wave if you can, please. Oh, there you go. Uh, my name is Shailesh, founder and CEO of MatchMove. Uh, in one minute, Jeff, uh, if that's allowed, uh, we can put a bank in any app. Any app on your phone, we can put a bank inside. What banking means are three things, spend, send, and lend. So if your app's user does not have a bank account, can't transact online, has cash in their pockets, is holding a phone, but is unable to transact online, we can solve that problem. We've built a, uh, a wallet, a bank-grade wallet in the cloud. Uh, it's now deployed across seven countries. And we have very large and very small organizations using it. Uh, some of the largest include Indian Railways and airlines. And some of the smallest include uh, startups. Every one of them has a very common need, which is, as I say, people have phones. They have cash in their pockets their users are unable to move digital money. We've solved that problem with uh, our capability, which we call a bank in any app. Um, right now, we're also expanding into Indonesia, uh, kinds of customers uh, that are looking at us. Uh, the end customer, since we're a B2B platform, the end customer is the one who's actually holding the phone. Our path is B2B to C. Uh, so that's match moving one. Sure, Shalash, could you also touch a little bit on sort of in terms of the impact and, and the financial and social inclusion? Sure, so the, the background, I mean the whole thing about impact for us is, uh, for MatchMove is about improving the quality of life of people using uh, technology. And uh, the theory is that lots of people have, uh, in fact the fact is that lots of people have phones. Today you have people in different countries who are able to shop, browse through a catalog, you know, Lazada or Tokopedia or whatever else it is. But, and they can see the product they want. They have money in their pockets, but it's cash. They don't have a bank account. They can't actually buy the things they need. And this could maybe not just be something that you want for, for home improvement. It could be a textbook that you need. It could be an online course that you need to further yourself. So you can see it, you can't pay for it. Or you can use your phone to talk to your family through uh, WhatsApp and video. You can see what's going on at home, but if it's a birthday or a medical emergency, you can't actually send the money. You have to go down to Western Union and send it off. You're earning a regular income, but you can't actually get the credit that you want because you don't have a bank account because there's no bank account nearby. That's the impact we're having, Jeff. We're making a difference in, in people's quality of life by helping them transact for the daily things they need using digital money. Sure. 
Maybe we can move to the next slide. Next slide, please. No? Oh, maybe that, that's, oh, there we go. Oh, PHA, that must be you. Right. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, so I run the Asia business for RWDC. Uh, we are a materials company. Uh, we make a material that can uh, replace plastics in many, many applications. So our mission is to replace single-use plastics. And this material is, uh, is naturally occurring, uh, and it is biodegradable. Biodegradable in the true sense of the word, it, uh, we have the certificates from uh, TUV Austria, which is the EU standards, for biodegradability in soil, fresh water, and marine conditions, i.e. all potential end-of-life scenarios. The material is highly versatile. There are 150 types of PHA, and each one of them is slightly different from the other. So on the slide, you can see you know, the kind of the kind of applications that we can touch. Uh, we are, on top of this, we are working on other applications like diapers and wet wipes and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, the impact is to replace plastics because it's a disaster. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to be making all this single use consumables, disposables with something that is indestructible, right? Plastic is ultimately a material that nature cannot deal with, and this is the problem, uh, and this is the reason why we're seeing all this uh, uh, ill effects. And if you were to cite one number to describe the problem, what would that number be? One number. One number to describe the scale of this problem? Uh, maybe two numbers. Plastic has only been around for 60, 70 years, and we've managed to contaminate 80% of our waters with microplastic. So imagine in another 60, 70 years, all our children will be drinking microplastics. That's what it is. Thank you. Dan, you want to go while we bring up the next slide? Sure. So I'm Dan. I'm the head of strategy for Migo and also in charge of our Indonesia operations, which are about to launch in just a few months. So it's an exciting time here. Migo's mission is to transform lives through bringing digital services to everyone. Now, I don't need to talk to this room about how transformative digital services, whether it's education, fintech, uh, entertainment, logistics, all these things can be for people. But if you go into an average Indonesian neighborhood, what you'll find is people that tell you two things. One, when they pull out their phone and try to use the network, it's congested and it's slow. And two, uh, they have to think about how much data they're gonna use because the price points, even in a place like Indonesia, are high compared to average incomes. So how Migo solves that problem is we're building a brand new type of network with a totally globally unique infrastructure that allows us to deliver data for 0.1 to 1% the cost of traditional telcos. So once consumers get their hands on that, they can uh, bring ed educational apps to their kids. They can have their eyes open to whole different parts of the world that they have never been to before or never heard about. Uh, the impacts are, are simply endless once you can put things on this platform that today, 60, 70% of Indonesians are just locked out of. And, and, and moving into the next question, which is really, so we talked a little bit about purpose, what the company does and what, what, how it impacts uh, society. Let's talk a little bit about some of the economics, right? Because this is a panel about... about that, that there doesn't necessarily need to be a tension between profit and, and purpose. And, and Dan, since you, you, you spoke about what you do, could you roughly talk about the economic model? How do you deliver at a fraction of the cost and yet remain profitable? Are you a charity or you, can you be profitable? No, we're, we're, we're certainly not a charity, Jeff. Uh, we actually have 80% gross margins, about a six month capex payback period, and our price point is only 2,000 rupiah per day. Um, so there's two fundamental things that allow us to do that. Uh, one is the network costs. So the unique network design that we have, hyper-distributed, micro-cached content delivery network that is located in C&D consumer neighborhoods, that's less than 1% the cost of a telco. So that means that we can charge people prices that they can actually afford and still make a profit off of that. So 2,000 rupiah for a day, 
that's something that anyone with a smartphone can afford to use whenever they want. And so that's how we blow the market open and have a much larger volume than existing competitors. So, so basically you're disrupting the traditional telco networks. We see ourselves as complementary to traditional telco networks because right now these consumers aren't actually using traditional telcos for data heavy services. They just aren't getting data heavy services. They're using the telcos for WhatsApp and Facebook and other very light things. But this actually brings something entirely new to their lives without encroaching on anyone else's territory business wise. Right, and, and, and Shailesh, perhaps you can talk a little bit about MatchMove's uh, economic model, how, how, how you guys operate in terms of... Sure, Jeff. I think it's, it's very similar to, to my friends here in the entertainment business. So what, what we're addressing is the fact that banks provide banking services, people need banking services, and banks are just unable to reach them fast enough. Introduce mobile technology, introduce cloud, and you have a new way to reach more and more people faster at a much lower price point because you're building for scale. And in that flow of value, consumers are willing to pay micro amounts for convenience. Uh, whether it comes from the consumer, the merchant network, or all the intermediaries, they're actually willing to pay. This was not achievable by banks before because they're very asset heavy. They depend on ATMs and branches. But cloud and mobile allows you to reach more people. And so even one basis point, 0.01% of a transaction, if you do it a million times, it starts to become meaningful. So we're not, we're not uh, changing that, Jeff. We're basically saying we're reaching more people faster at a much lower par, uh, price point. Chao Tan, these, um, so you target biodegradable or, or the, the single pl plastic, uh, single use plastic industry trying to disrupt that. Uh, you, the material you have is fully biodegradable. Is it economical? Yeah, so uh, we are more expensive. If you go material cost versus material cost, uh, we are more expensive because of our profit margins. Uh, <laughs> we want to be profitable. Uh, there's no reason for us to uh, uh, to go just head on on a, on a price basis, uh, but it's important to uh, to focus, and this is why there's so many applications that we can work on. Uh, but our star product, our key product focus, is actually coated paper, paper coatings. You know, the coating that goes on your the plastic lining on your on your Starbucks cups, for example. Um, and the reason why we go for that is because we have a, a coating that can significantly disrupt the economics of coating paper such that we can achieve price parity. And, uh, and at price parity, we are highly profitable. Uh, so, so this is our star product. What we're saying is a material, uh, uh, an application where we have no cost barrier, high profit margins, and is a massive market. So this is how we are using that to determine the pricing of our, our whole suite of uh, applications. Uh, so it's important to recognize that, uh, you know, what, what, where, which is the area that you should uh, focus on to determine uh, your business strategy. Yeah. So certainly from an investor's viewpoint, your investors have seen value in investing a new uh, not just from a purposeful side, but also from a, from a financial return side, and you've all returned <coughs> substantial returns to your investors. But in your, and maybe you want to talk a little bit about that, we have a little over a minute left, but, but also in your day-to-day -day operations, have you ever had to make decisions that, that straddle and, and, and create a tension between, hey, this is leaning more towards my purpose and my remit, you know, but for profit sake, I don't want to do that. Or, or have you ever had to make tough decisions along those lines? Sure, yes, uh, Jeff, all the time. Um, you know, we have the overarching vision to improve the quality of life of people. Uh, but the truth is that in today's world, economic returns do matter. And if you're not funded by uh, a very large uh, $100 billion fund, uh, you have to keep thinking about uh, what is your priority? And there are many times we do think about we could do this, it's more meaningful, more impactful, 
uh, for more people, uh, but we actually choose not to because we are more focused on achieving uh, targets for this year. But that's not always the case. There are times actually when our own staff, our own people who are also committed uh, to this idea of quality of life will say, it's okay if we don't do this in, in normal time, we want to work on this and drive this project or program through in our own time. So we were able to find a, a middle, but it's not always uh, in parallel. So I think the tensions that you face uh, in that sort of domain are a real function of the business uh, sector that you operate in and your business model. And I guess Migo has set itself up from the very beginning with a very simple proposition, uh, which is that we're going to create a great service that is incredibly cheap and we charge customers a fair price for it. So that and bringing them those kinds of services doesn't mean there's day-to-day -day tension at all. I mean, certainly there are ways, there are products you could put on our network that uh, might be profitable, it would cause tension, but that's not, that's not something that's built into our business's DNA, and so that's something that we have a very easy time uh, ignoring and focusing on what is both profitable and, and good. Yeah, I'll, I'll end up by saying um, the concept of sustainability includes uh, financial <laughs> uh, sustainability. The, the company needs to be able to have the resources to keep growing. And especially for our company, uh, the, the name of the game is speed and scale. So if we're not big enough, if we don't have the resources to grow big enough, we're not going to make that impact. So both are important. And then we've run out of time, so, so maybe just let me sum up by, by uh, thanking my fellow panelists here. Uh, and just to let you know that, that uh, they will be around uh, for part of the afternoon at least. Uh, if any of you out there would like to find out how you can make money and uh, create social benefit to the society, please feel free to contact them. Thank you. Thank you.